Hello, everyone. Welcome to our webinar today for monitoring operational performance and overall equipment effectiveness. Appreciate you taking a few minutes to join. My name is Dave Blaida, President and CEO of Matrix Technologies. And uh, we've got a good presentation coming up for you that John Lee will be putting on. And John, if you want to go to the next slide. Just a high level view of Matrix, who we are. Um, we're celebrating 40 years of success this year and have been delivering automation and information solutions into the industrial marketplace throughout our history. So the area that John will be focusing on today is part of what we call our MSS division, Manufacturing Systems and Solutions. And John is a member of that organization. So look forward to what John can share with you today. And uh, we'll go to the next slide. Now I'll turn it over to John to introduce himself and get started. All right. Hello and welcome. My name is John Lee. I'm the strategic manager for manufacturing intelligence here at Matrix Technologies. I have a long background in manufacturing solutions. I'm certified in many different packages. I actually had my career start um, within a database information systems and programming. Uh, I started with classified messaging in the military, moved on to health information technology, and I joined Matrix in 2007. So I've been in the manufacturing space for over 13 years now. Just a few housekeeping items uh, before we start today's webinar. Uh, please feel free to ask questions uh, through the Microsoft Teams chat dialog box. Uh, we'll try to answer questions at the end of the webinar. And also, please feel free to reach out to me with additional questions at the end. Um, I like to share our experiences and work with you on how Matrix can help uh, with your unique challenges and some of our solutions. And with that, we'll get started. I hope you enjoy our presentation. So why this topic today? Why talk about smart manufacturing operational performance? Well, overall, this is about improvement. Improvement for common challenges manufacturers face today and how to employ varying technologies or manufacturing intelligence, as we like to call it, with the goal of improving manufacturing operations overall. Smart manufacturing is defined in many different ways today. Uh, I have a slide up and basically it's referring to employing advanced technologies, uh, some of the newer software technologies, connectivity that are out there today in controls, modeling, uh, databases and big data and other automation improvements uh, for manufacturing operations. This technology enables flexibility in the physical processes in both a dynamic and global market. So let's start at the beginning with some references to some of these business challenges and the business issues that drive uh, some of these import improvement initiatives. So where do you start with projects like these and what typically leads to discussions on operational performance and OEE? Normally stems from operational issues or concerns. When you think about it, what are some of the business challenges you may face as manufacturers today's, in today's environment? What are some of the things that keep people awake at night? What are the problem solving what ifs that stir around in your mind? And where are you searching for solutions? These may include, you know, quality issues. Why are you having waste, rework, and overtime uh, not in accordance or in alignment with your production schedule? Uh, how do you, why do you typically have a lot of off spec product and how can you avoid that? How can you begin to measure that and start making some decisions about how the improvements will materialize? What about operationally? <clears throat> you may know that you need some additional operator training, but how do you justify the investment? A lot of time these justifications need some baselines and some data collected and some metrics. Downtime seems to be a big issue for many manufacturers. Unplanned downtime directly affects your performance 
How do you find the root cause? And there are various other factors that lead to discussions on operational performance in OEE. But in the end, when you're looking at such a large effort, sometimes you just want to pick off some of that low hanging fruit. <clears throat> you want to be able to justify with data and metrics, where's the biggest opportunity for improvement? And how do you get started with those? A lot of these issues can be categorized into just a few major areas, such as equipment downtime, operator issues, material or inventory shortages, constant quality off spec issues, and then tooling adjustments involved with changeovers and adjusting the process to optimize it. So as you start to organize these thoughts, the business challenges start to become apparent. Decisions can then be made Business goals can be formulated with specific and measurable outcomes. And this is a key for many of these projects is being able to measure your improvements and measure your return. Programs and initiatives encompassing these goals can then be implemented. This is where OEE and performance management projects are introduced to the business. You want to focus on capturing data, data at the source, and try to eliminate any kind of errors in the data or data collection by using as much automation as possible. These measured results allow for better utilization of assets and also lead to increases in operational performance overall. When you look throughout your manufacturing operations, you may see a lot of different areas as shown on the slide. You may see issues with capacity. You may see bottlenecks in your throughput. You may see individual asset downtime issues, and these can be constantly recurring. But imagine how efficient things could be if you knew precisely which processes were constraining the overall production output, taking into account all the losses and issues you would be able to focus your efforts to address these concerns and constraints. But what if the bottleneck or constraint is shifting? Or maybe it's not the true or chronic, chronic constraint. What if the numbers aren't providing the real picture? Would your improvement efforts be less effective? This may appear so in time. We've seen many projects where the bottleneck can shift. When you start making improvements and addressing one asset or one inefficiency, another one will appear within the same line or work cell. This is why it's a continuous improvement effort and it requires a program to continually monitor and re-baseline so that you can make sure that your improvement efforts are aligned with your goals. What do you need to know to improve? Well, you need to know what is going on and what may be causing the issues. And in order to do that, you need the data and you need to start with some types of measurements. Even simple measurements like cycle downtimes, cycle times or downtimes can be critical metrics to an overall improvement effort. Dr. James Harrington quoted, measurement is the first step that leads to control and eventually improvement. If you can't measure something, you can't understand it. If you can't understand it, you can't control it. And if you can't control it, you can improve it. Dr. Harrington, by the way, uh, was often known as a quality guru, and uh, he wrote a book, uh, The Business Process Improvement Methodology, uh, decades ago. Uh, he has a lot of articles and presentations and is consulting on process improvement over many years. So as you begin to look at capturing data, where should you start if your goal is to understand and improve operational performance? Well, OEE is typically known as the most common metric when you're looking at operational performance. OEE is the overall equipment effectiveness. It can be applied to an asset or a group of assets such as on a line. It is a key metrics that was formulated back in the 60s. 
It was introduced with the total productive maintenance as a plant improvement methodology. OE measures three key performance indicators in manufacturing, those being the performance, availability, and quality. Maximizing OEE and operational performance is critical in today's very competitive environment. With the latest advances in technology and modernized manufacturing facilities in several industries, every small improvement can have a positive impacts to your bottom line. One of the key things on this particular slide, oops, sorry, is talking about rates. When you talk about rates and performance, you have the actual performing rate and you have ideal cycle times. And you want to be sure that you're performing at the rates desired. Often rates or set points can be adjusted, but if you're adjusting too low, the output can suffer. And this will show unused capacity. Therefore, we will normally be a calculated ideal cycle time which takes into account the assets capabilities. Normally an OEM uh, will have a target or ideal cycle time for a piece of equipment, such as a filler, capper, labeler. Um, so you'll know what the ideal cycle time. But of course that has to be recalculated into the work cell or a line when you're combining and interlocking multiple assets. That ideal cycle time may change. Some customers, perform calculations for maximum demonstrated rate. This would be the maximum rate the line can run at uh, before encountering issues uh, with both machine availability and quality. Different ideal cycle times may be applicable and similar, but separate for different assets. You might have more than one filler, but one can only run at a certain speed and another filler can run at a slightly higher speed well, without issues. They may be same manufacturer, but different generations. Uh, this would apply with baggers, cappers, uh, different types of assets. Also, some assets never reach their advertised rates. <laughs> uh, hopefully, uh, when the asset is commissioned, um, these specified rates are verified, but sometimes this is missed and this needs to be adjusted. And when you perform your calculations, you want to know what your ideal cycle time needs to be. This infographic breaks down the main three KPIs, key performance indicators, the time that they affect within your production time, and some typical loss causes shown to the right that affect each metric in each area. And at the bottom, you can see how it rolls up into your OEE calculation and your OEE loss, or where, which is commonly your loss capacity. The availability refers to the machine or cell being available for production whenever it is scheduled to run. At the most basic level, when a process is running, it is producing and creating value for the end user. When a process is stopped, it is creating a cost with no associated value. Whether it's due to mechanical failure, raw material shortages, or operator issues, the seller machine is either producing or not producing. Performance, on the other hand, is determined by how much waste is created through running at less than optimal speeds. In comparing the actual cycle times against ideal cycle times, the OE calculation allows for a determination of how much production was lost by cycles that did not meet that ideal cycle time. Lastly, quality focuses on identifying time that was wasted by producing a product that does not meet quality standards. This is often looked at as first pass good quality. By comparing the quantity of good to reject parts, the percentage of time actually adding value by producing good product is then exposed. As you can see in the chart, there are some common loss causes, and these are some categories uh, where focused improvement efforts uh, can be developed. When you look at downtime, sometimes it's erroneously reported. You might have uh, breakdowns in the machine, 
You might have a lot of overruns on your setups and changeovers. Sometimes the speed or cycle time losses are attributed to reduced speed and this reduced cycle time. Uh, there are times when the operators will slow the machines down for them to run better or avoid issues. Uh, but if it was scheduled to run at a specific cycle time for a specific production order or product, um, you're actually losing performance. And that's where the speed loss in the red box would come in. And the same thing for quality. If you're having a lot of first pass quality issues, scrap and rework, that all takes time. And that time away is reducing your OEE score through the quality metric. OEE can also be used as a baseline to set goals for improvement. It can be used to track progress and measure these improvement efforts. It can also be used as a benchmark for comparisons of many manufacturing aspects, including different assets that are similar, different processes and shifts, among other context frames. We all know that different products may run differently on the same machines. They may have different makeups, different raw materials, viscosities. They may run better or worse. Uh, sometimes the cycle time needs to be adjusted as previously explained. Um, but there are other factors as well. When you look at OEE and you can measure it and trend it, you may see unknown trends in that data. You may see different products have different OEEs associated with them but also different teams or shifts. Um, you can also contextualize the data amongst assets as well, or just compare lines in general. If you have eight bottling lines and one line far outperforms the others, you may wanna try to understand why. Is it related to the equipment? Is it related to the operators or the teams or certain products get run on that line? All of the data collected can be analyzed and these trends can be uncovered. In the end, the higher OEE results and the efforts to get there will result in lower operating costs. And of course, this is increased profitability. So how do we start with looking at improving efficiency? Any metric that can be measured can be measured in many ways. So you might be asking, how does this apply to smart manufacturing or even a digital factory? Well, this technology of today and operations management software combined with high speed connectivity allows for near real time metrics. And this allows for faster response times to changing conditions and potential issues negative, negatively affecting operational performance. You want to look for a single source of truth. Look to the source of the data. When we put in solutions, we're awful, awful, oftentimes looking directly towards the control system where the data is generating. This may be the process data collected to a process historian, or it could be the operational data that's collected into database systems. You also want to be mindful of contextualizing that data. So when you report it out, it's not just data, it's actually providing information and maybe some different types of context or scope. This provides information that is valuable to all the users and stakeholders. What kind of data would you normally collect? Some are shown on the slide here. We have seen a lot of errors in some of the manual tracking with some of the facilities that we go into. Um, errors in logging to clipboards uh, include things like uh, people bias. Maybe the wrong assets are being attributed to downtimes. We also see just a total lack of reporting. There's just no visibility to the data itself or the accuracy of the data. There could also be incorrect timing. Uh, you know, incorrect timing reporting on outages or, you know, break overruns change over overruns. Um, and then the last one with downtime is the minor stops. The minor stops often don't get reported 
um, when you're using manual systems. An automated system automatically will be able to capture all those minor or micro stops. And those can really add up over the duration of a shift or a production order or work order run. Um, and automated, automated reporting and analysis can really show once that time is aggregated over a shift or a day um, that you're using, losing maybe even up to an hour within a day from just the 60 second or less stops that are continually occurring. So having that single source of truth, being able to collect the information and have some context around the data is actually going to allow you to get a better picture to help improve efficiency. With that, a real world solution would be better. Looking for a management tool or a software solution can help optimize the production efficiency and leveraging technology to overcome some of the issues previously mentioned is a real key. This data is then widely available throughout the connected systems with advanced visualization through dashboards and even notifications. Quick view gauges, such as those shown in some of the screenshots on the slide, provide indications to the operators and other stakeholders so they can implement decisions and actions immediately to affect the outcome and not wait on roll-up data at the end of the day or the end of the week. Running manual analytics with written records or through data gathering efforts of disparate systems and reports after a production or work order has completed simply would not allow time for an impactful reaction and positive result. This is how the smart manufacturing is seen as an advancement over these older methods and systems and is changing the manufacturing landscape today. Having a software tool can help gain real time insight into your production as it's happening. It can also assist with evaluating root cause of poor performance. It can help compare improvement activities and their results and provide baselines and measurements. And overall, it can help improve production planning as well as scheduling, workflow, and overall productivity. When you're looking at all this, it may be a lot to bite off at first. An old adage I, I enjoy is, if you wanna eat an elephant, you gotta start with small bites. And you can start small and you can still see some large returns. If you start small with just say monitoring the performance, looking at some cycle times versus some ideal cycle times. Also, when you start tracking downtime data, and maintaining that data integrity by collecting it with an automated system that can really reveal a lot about the performance in your operation. The next level might be to start grabbing the machine faults using first fault logic. Having the system auto collect the faults will remove some of the errors and biases that we spoke about earlier. Um, we had cases where a filler might you know, keep stopping and having a lot of faults and downtime, uh, but it turned out either the infeed or possibly the capper on the outfeed side was actually the asset causing the problems. Uh, but it was always just reported as the filler was stopped because that was the only thing really being monitored uh, at that particular facility. So it was very hard to troubleshoot and get into the details to find out where the real issue was. Also, having standard downtime reasons. Many of the software packages employed today have standard reasons. I've seen the clipboards that do have the standard categories list them, but they often have the other where operators can write in what they think, or maybe the maintenance personnel will just write in what the reason was. That makes it very difficult to roll up all of that data at some point and really do an analysis and figure out what is causing the issue what is causing the poor performance. Having the standard downtime reasons across the facility, uh, across the different lines or across many facilities 
really help streamline that improvement effort because you can really focus it down on a single asset or a single category or definition of a downtime and really pinpoint where your issues are and where your effort should be spent uh, for your improvement. All of this data being collected will help provide valuable root cause analysis. So next, I'd like to look at just what does this look like? Some of these software packages, what do they provide? This is a software we have used before for some of our clients. Um, that is by Parsec Automation. And as you can see, it may seem a little busy at first, but there's a lot of great information shown. This is a line overview screen, often shown to the operators, sometimes shown on overhead displays. Like many software packages, it has the gauges listed. These are towards the bottom. The gauges often have a sweeping indicator that shows a positional indication of where the OEE and the KPI metrics, availability, performance, and quality are currently running. In this case, the OEE is running kind of low, but as you look across the other indicators, you can see why. Most gauges also involve color. But as we know, color is not the only indicator. So the sweeping gauge helps with that. There are other things that might catch your eye, such as the progress bar in the middle. Typically, progress bars are meant to show the production state within a shift or work order or production order and how far along um, you are during your progress. Some of these may have a carrot in the middle to show where you should be or if you're running behind or ahead. That just helps for the operations and maybe supervisory staff to understand where in the progress of that order are you currently. Finally, the charts on the top provide great information on how the, sub, how the assets are performing within the line. These often show where your concerns should be directed. These show the definition of the outages uh, downtime instances, and they also list categories of downtimes or events that are occurring that are affecting your OEE metrics. Many of these charts have drill down capability. They help answer the question of why. Another quick indication from looking at these charts is you can see the bar on the left is definitely larger than the bars to the right. So you're having a single event category or definition uh, which is causing most of your reduced OEE in this case. This drill down capability when you click on it would read you would lead you down into a deep dive analysis. And in this next slide we'll show the downtime report analysis from clicking on a chart. So here you can see it no longer provides just the top five but it shows all of the downtime events and you can see them stacked up by count and by duration. A lot of the software packages would also have filtering capabilities where you can filter by asset or line. You can filter by shift or possibly team or date um, or even like a production order or a product. Having that context provides real powerful analytical capabilities. In this case, the bar on the left is still one of the highest duration of line stops for this particular example. If you were to click on this bar, you see to the right, it actually shows the individual line stop events and each one of their durations. Some software would allow you to drill down even further. If you click a spe spe specific event, it actually can show you more details about that event and perhaps the reason code that the operator listed as a reason for an outage. So this will vary by technology employed or the software package selected. Uh, but as you can see, this does provide a lot of information. And once you have this information, you can start making some decisions about where your improvements efforts should be focused. These decisions can lead into some actions that you can document and you can measure. You can go back and look a day later or the next time you run the same product 
and see if the decisions that you made and the actions you took actually provide the results you're looking for and the improvements. This is where the analysis can really help within the overall improvement of performance. Another screen, for example, is from a Wonderware solution. This is Aviva software, and it basically shows the same layout. It's also a very powerful tool. It can drill down uh, into the bar chart that's seen. You can go back and see event details, making up those downtime events that you're seeing collected. Um, but it also has the quick indications of where your OEE and KPIs are currently residing. Again, it has a sweeping gauge for positional indication as well as some colors. And the colors can change. Uh, normally these are configurable. So if you have different targets, maybe for this quarter or for this year or for certain facilities, you can actually have the colors adjusted. Many of these software packages have configuration elements to each screen. Everyone strives for the 85% world-class OEE, but you may start with it just a smaller improvement on your path towards overall performance improvements. There are many more software packages out there and they all show similar things. So when we're looking at increasing OEE, we're actually increasing efficiency. An OEE performance management solution can help to increase employee engagement and morale, as well as many other things. When we're increasing OEE through availability, performance, and quality, we're looking at a reduction in downtime, unproductive time, cycle times, and scrap. The results would be reduced unit costs, reduction in material costs from waste, reduction in labor costs and capital costs. Then you can realize increased productivity, revenue and profitability. But just remember, the improvement happens when you look at how you can reduce that downtime, unproductive time, cycle times and scrap. And this is where the data can help provide the information needed for your improvement efforts. Some other things that an OEE performance management solution can help provide is more interactions within existing plant for interfaces. The solution will often tie the business system to the control system. There are many ways for the software to connect to different systems. Each package provides for open connectivity and you can buy drivers uh, to connect to the PLCs. Um, you can connect to SAP or different ERP systems. Uh, they can often incorporate work order management. They can often incorporate inventory management, but starting small with something like performance management can still provide for big gains. The software often provides actionable notifications of failures. When the events are occurring or a downtime, uh, you know, would maybe exceed a certain limit or configurable limit, such as five minutes, you can fire off notifications through email or SMS. Maybe a higher level notification needs to be made to maintenance if an asset is down for, say, longer than five minutes. A lot of the software packages of today will allow this. This also helps facilitate rapid and proactive responses. So the line is not down while operators are trying to figure out issues or more people can be engaged to help reduce that downtime. So if you're looking at improving operational performance and you want to look at OEE, you need a path forward. There's, there's many ways to start on this transformation or this journey, and it can be phased. It can be a very much a phased approach. There is more and more manufacturing software being introduced into the market all the time. It is hard to select which one is best. 
There are a lot of surveys out there from McKinsey, Gartner, Control Engineering. Um, but for us, the best practice seems to be speaking with our customers and clients as an independent integrator where we can assist in selecting the best software for a particular industry or need based on our information and our experiences. And we believe it's very important to identify the business issues up front. What are the requirements and how are you going to attain the business value that you're really looking for? Too many projects are conceived as just technical recommendations to a problem without sufficient correlation to that business value. We also believe in aligning the long term goals and requirements, then reviewing and assessing different software solutions that can meet those requirements. We don't look at compromising on the business issue and requirements just to meet limitations of the software packages. There are some great ones out there on the market today. We look for the 80 for the 20, where 80% of the requirements can be met with the software solution and the other 20% we'll figure out. Many of them are customizable, are configurable, and many of the vendors will also help work with the end users. To help facilitate this, Matrix provides consulting services and pre-engineering, which helps evaluate the appropriate software solution to meet your requirements. We've also seen the road to successful project begins really with executive sponsorship. You really need to have that project champion that really understands the business value. It can help identify the issues and the goals and requirements. Going through the prioritization of the problem areas, listing out the opportunities. Having this business value alignment documented well upfront as part of the justification for both the tactical and strategic uh, plan. Identifying the overall scope and requirements. Many times you want to drop in some software to collect data from the control system, but the control system may not be accessible. You need to identify if that scope is included or not. There may be some network enhancements that need to be made, or you need a network assessment to see what is what is within the process control network that can be connected to. There are many options today, including smart devices uh, that can help with this, but it's always good to have those requirements detailed out. And this is where Matrix can help with some initial consulting. Understanding timeframes and expectations. These can often be a long-term journey of overall improvement. Some customer we, we've seen like to start with maybe a pilot line or a smaller project or maybe one facility out of many. So having these expectations, you know, uh, documented into a path or a phased approach with time frames and also including those measurements of how you're going to measure success and how you're going to measure your baseline and whether or not you're achieving your business value and goals. And then lastly is just understanding the technology in the manufacturing environment. So as you can see, when we see successful projects, they're normally geared around understanding the business first, understanding that strategic deployment and path forward. The technology comes later and the technology will get you to the end. Thank you, that's all the information I have today. I would like to open it up to questions now. Dave, if we have any questions. Yes, we've got a couple here. So the first one is how long is downtime data saved and accessible to a plant using your services? So this can vary uh, with different software solutions. Um, a lot of facilities maintain at least one year and some go for multiple years. A retention plan is often something that we include uh, with the initial functional specification of the solution uh, and help determine that with the end user, the customer. Some of the data can be archived and still accessible, just not in the actual transactional or production database. 
So you may have an analytic system or you may archive it off to, you know, maybe a different server on the business network so that you can still access that reporting. So it's really de de determined by the requirements of the customer. And that's something we do talk up front about the retention period of the data. We've seen a lot of cases where there's no retention um, discussed up front and databases and process historians, as everyone knows, uh, can grow over time and sometimes grow uncontrollably or cause system performance issues. So it's definitely something that we address in the beginning. Typically, we see at least a year, sometimes three to five. Okay. So the next question is, get this published out there, everybody, is if we make a change to our theoretical rates, and the example is they were running a filler at 540 containers a minute, and then they changed that rate to 600 containers a minute. Is there a way to go back and retrofit the old data to match the new rate? So this would depend, some of the software does allow for recalculation on the OEE interval and other software doesn't. It is not typical to want to go back and recalculate things from the past. I know it's easy to do when you're doing manual collection or manual aggregations into spreadsheets, um, but the software, uh, it typically wouldn't, you wouldn't want to do that for the active run. The software that does allow you to change the rates would only show when you go back and you do, uh, I guess, historical reporting. So if you did change the rate and you forced an update for the OE intervals, say you do a weekend report or a month end report, it would be reflected there. But certainly during an actual production run, if you change the rate once, once the run has started the job or the work order, it would not reflect until the next one. Okay, very good. I'll get back to the next question. I think we're going to turn your video on, John, just so people can see you as okay. the next few. Um, let's see, filtering through these. We'll go with this one, which is what are some of the expected performance gains across OEE? So there, there has actually been a lot of surveys done uh, by both software vendors and, and independent, um, I guess independent marketing. Um, typical gains run in the five to 15% range. Um, I believe uh, Amazon reported last year, the year before, um, that their solutions within their platform actually averaged 16% OE increases overall. Um, Aviva software has reported a range of five to 15% uh, over a three month, three to four month period. And these are numbers, you can find the surveys on the, the web from Garner, uh, McKenzie, others. Control Engineering will publish sometimes an annual article that will list out some typical gains. And other good resources are like mesa.org, um, the mesassociation.org, um, even oee.com uh, has a lot of good articles uh, and a lot of good use cases. Um, for us personally, we have seen cases where they do fall in the five to 15% range for improvements overall. Okay, next question is how do you perform OEE calculations in a continuous process or a batch process? Ah, <laughs> stepping outside of the discrete manufacturing. Um, so OEE, um, you know, in total productive ma management um, was originally for discrete manufacturing and it's really around part counts, uh, but there are unique ways, especially in batching, where you can convert the expected cycle times um, to feed the calculations uh, into the OEE formula, such as performance. So in batching, uh, your performance is rated on how long you're expected to be in an operation or a process step, right? So if you're heating a vessel, it's how long were you expected to heat that vessel? 
So it's more around those actual times versus what were the expected times for each one. And those get calculated back into time loss or time gains, uh, which do feed back into the OEE formula and will provide an OEE number e even over a batching process. Continuous is similar to the same. Uh, it's when you're running through maybe a catalyst uh, throughout the continuous process, and it's really you know monitoring the flow indications for your expected flow over a period of time versus your actual flow over a period of time in that continuous process. Okay. All right. Next question. Uh, would you rate one package better than another package? And if so, which one? And are there large cost differences for the different packages on the market today? Um, I don't know that we would necessarily rate one over the other. Um, certainly there's there's marketing material which you know takes customer surveys about which one they like for different reasons or features. Um, as I said in the slide earlier, we really look for the package that will meet the requirements. So we really like to sit down and understand what the business challenges are, what some of the, the you know, business value and end goals we're looking for, and really try to assess different packages to understand which one is more suitable, uh, maybe for that process or which one you know, serves the industry better. Um, so I wouldn't necessarily recommend one of, over the other. Uh, many of them have different features uh, such as, you know, the licensing, how it's licensed and purchased, whether or not it has mobile capabilities or can be delivered through the web, uh, which is very common for many of the top packages today. Um, there's not many that are still standalone. Um, so we really look at the best fit for, for each customer. Um, and then we do look at those that facilitate multiple sites. If you're looking for an enterprise or a corporate rollout across facilities, uh, some, uh, you know, do better with multiple sites and rollups. Uh, some have, you know, cloud platform capabilities today. Um, others you, you just have to address with a multi-tiered approach. So all these factors we try to look at in the beginning to try to fit the right software for your needs. Okay. I think we're down to a couple questions left here. Um, to this next question, which is where do you see the next steps for companies that have been utilizing downtime and the OEE tracking, OEE tracking software for the past three to five years? Are there more holistic enterprise solutions that we should be doing with the data to drive results? Yeah, so it depends on how tightly coupled uh, or integrated the OEE solution currently is. Um, we've seen many that may simply just be using features such as performance management or, or just grabbing the OEE, um, but starting to bring in, you know, more holistic approach would be like bringing in the inventory uh, work order management, being able to extend that context out uh, where you can reach up to, you know, maybe the inventory materials coming in, more on that ERP side, uh, help facilitate scheduling or advanced, advanced uh, planning and scheduling uh, type capabilities. Um, other OE software uh, does offer capabilities for like workflow. Uh, and you can start to introduce workflows, um, even workflow um, work instructions for the operators. These are other minor things that still play into a holistic solution, all geared around visibility and improvements. And that whole connected supply chain of bringing in the planning, the scheduling, uh, the materials and the inventory, all can still provide benefits over just a basic OEE solution. Okay, very good. And I think Last question, unless we get any other submitted, is how is user adoption handled for new OEE software? How well do those users adapt to using the downtime reason code? Oh, okay. The, this is an interesting one. This is this is kind of site dependent, uh, you know. But the approach that we like is to work directly with the operational staff. 
Um, and, you know, we like to come in, uh, we like to go through some training sessions, uh, whether it's trying to train all the operators with a system or simulated system, um, or it's, you know, train the trainer aspect, uh, where we're looking at some of the more senior operators or shift supervisors, uh, where we train them and maybe help co-lead a couple sessions uh, so that they're comfortable with uh, providing the material on some of the changes. Um, and there are many, many companies, manufacturers today that also have an additional like uh, process or continuous improvement. They often have a change management group and the change management group uh, can be critical uh, when rolling out any type of, of new packages, new software, especially those that are going to directly affect the operators and it's going to be right in front of them. And this may start with just easing into, you know, what, what is what are these metrics? What is OEE? Uh, how does it affect the business? Um, you know, what the purpose and drivers are, uh, that business value. Um, just that change management process of slowly introducing it instead of just, you know, uh, just putting a system out in front of them and saying, here, here's an operator manual. Uh, hopefully you attended training. Um, you know, we find a lot more success when we have that planned approach and we can work and partner together with the site and the customer on how that engagement's going to work with the users and various stakeholders. Um, there's a lot of analytical reporting that comes in many of these packages. Um, and we have subject matter experts that will often sit down and provide advanced sessions uh, for those system supervisors or system admins um, who are going to be doing the deep, deep dive reporting and really understanding the capabilities, uh, analytics and the software overall and maintenance. In the end, they're going to own the software and they're going to own the maintenance of the software. So Matrix, we typically provide those services and we like to talk up front about how that delivery is going to go to ensure success. OK, very good. Well, I think that is it in terms of the questions that have been submitted. So I think at this point, John, we can go ahead and wrap up just a couple minutes early. OK, given time back. So I like if you do, go ahead, John, do you have anything last to say or any? No, I like it, giving time back um, <laughs> as we're talking about performance and, and time savings here. <laughs> Absolutely. All right. Well, thank you everyone for joining us. And certainly if there's anything that we can do to help, uh, feel free to reach out to John or myself and uh, we'll arrange a further discussion. Have a great day. Yes, thank you. Have a great day.